So, reading from the prayers of Queen Kunti. Yesterday, we covered six verses. And those six verses generally described Krishna's identity and glorification and uh, submission to Krishna. Now, seventh onwards, Kunti Devi is describing the difficulties that she had gone through. As I was mentioning the other day, that Krishna puts his devotees into difficulties because then only comes the question of saving them. If there is no difficulty, is there any consideration of saving? Or like if you are, say for example, if everything is peaceful, everything is going on nicely, do you call the police? Huh? Only when somebody attacks you or there is some danger, huh? then you call the police. And the police comes and saves you, protects you. So similarly, the Supreme Personality of Godhead puts his devotees into difficulties in order to show the rest of the world how he protects his devotees. It is not that, uh, that if you become a devotee, then your life will become full of difficulties. <laughs> People have that misconception. Uh, People say, don't become a devotee of Krishna, then there will be lots of difficulties. <laughs> but uh, those difficulties are created by Krishna. Devotees are put into those difficulties for Krishna to uh, show the world how he protects his devotees. Like the other day we were discussing about Bharat Maharaj, when he became Jara Bharat, he was, he was taken by the Dakoids to be slaughtered in front of Kali. And what was Jara Bharat's attitude? Did he, did he try to defend himself? He just submitted himself to that situation. Even when they just put him to be slaughtered, uh, offered to Kali, uh, he was, even at that point, he is not protesting or trying to defend himself. But although he did not want to defend himself, but Kali came out, piercing through her, image, Murti. She, man she manifested herself, picked up the chopper from the hand of that dacoit. And with that chopper, Kali started to slaughter them. Uh, so this is how uh, the Lord protects his devotees and the Lord's devotees. Uh, like Kali is a devotee, she is a Vaishnavi. She has a terrible form. Mother nature sometimes becomes very, very terrible. Doesn't mother sometimes become terrible? She tolerates and tolerates and tolerates and then some, finally she comes and gives a whack. So similarly with mother nature, she tolerates, tolerates, tolerates and then she reacts in the form of Earthquake, oh. volcanic eruption, mm. epidemic, uh, war, these are the dangerous form of Mother Nature. So this is the dangerous form of Kali, the destructive form. Mm. But otherwise she is Krishna's uh, Maya. Krishna's illusory external <coughs> potency. 
she has a very gentle form also mother nature is very gentle otherwise annapurna jagadhatri uh, the maintainer of the world the maintainer of the jagat uh, she is jagadhatri very gentle form annapurna she is distributing food to everybody where do you get the food from is she who is providing the food for us uh, that is mother nature then sometimes she becomes uh, ugra very fierce in the form of durga uh, killing the demons and some sometimes she becomes devastating that is kali the same uh, mother nature or mahamaya have various aspects and those various aspects in those various aspects she assumes uh, different forms but she is uh, she is a vaishnavi so the uh, the devotees are put through difficulties in order to in order for krishna to show us how wonderfully he takes care of his devotees bashan mahagne purushad darshanad asat sabhaya vanavas kritchranam kritchatah मृधे मृधे ने कहारथाश्रतो दूर दूर द्रोण अस्त्राता चाशम हरे भी हरे भी माय डियर कृष्ण योर लॉर्डशिप हैज प्रोटेक्टेड अस फ्रॉम अ पॉइजन केक from a great fire from cannibals from the vicious assembly from suffering during our exile in the forest and from the battle where great generals fought and now you have saved us from the weapon of ashwatthama see so many dangerous situation just before uh, queen kunti i mean as queen kunti approach krishna to stay not to leave then at that time draupadi came running i'm sorry uh, uh, uttara came running uh, to krishna and uttara was actually pregnant with parikshit maharaj at that time that is the last Uh, only thread to the dynasty the only member uh, to maintain the dynasty and ashwatthama was so vicious so cruel uh, that he wanted to destroy that womb of uttara and he in order to destroy that he released brahmastra uh, the most dangerous weapon we can see how vicious people can become uh, otherwise quite an exalted personality the son of dronacharya born as an as an uh uh you can say shakta vesh incarnation of lord shiva in the potency of his rudra aspect ashwatthama was born and he is practically immortal i mean a brahmana quite an exalted personality and not just brahmana naam ki vaste brahmana uh, nowadays uh, people claim that they are brahmanas but they don't have any brahminical qualities uh, the only brahmanas we find today are in iskon uh, proper this creating the brahmanas uh, properly situated on the path of dharma following the four regulative principles most of the so called brahmans do not follow uh, the four regulative principles 
Anyway, uh, but those days the brahmanas were born with brahminical qualities. But uh, he is actually, instead of being in the mode of goodness, he is in the mode of passion. Rudra. Passion and ignorance. Ashwatthama. And he released the Brahmastra. Another consideration is that one is not supposed to use a weapon unless he knows how to retract it. Ashwatthama knows how, knew how to release the mantra, the Brahmastra, but did not know how to retract the weapon. So that way he was unqualified to release the weapon. Anyway, he did that. And at that time, what Krishna did? Brahmastra has been released to destroy the Um. Krishna personally came and protected him. The Um, Parikshit Maharaj in the Um. So Vishan, like let's go go through it one after another. Vishan from poison. They were just little kids, five, six years old. They were playing. And Bhima was a bully. He was very powerful. And generally those who are strong among the children, they tend to be very, they, they tend to be a bully. So Bhima was a bully. What to be done? Like children are like that. And he would, when they would swim, Bhima would just uh, grab them by the neck and uh, put them, push them down. Uh, and they would suffocate, then finally he would release them. They would climb a tree and he would shake the tree and they would fall from the tree. <laughs> and Durjanan became very envious that he couldn't actually deal with Bhima. Uh, he couldn't deal with Bhima. So, <clears throat> he decided to poison him. Just see how uh, vindictive this character is. As a child, he is so vindictive that he wanted to kill Bhima. And what a plot. Uh, give him sweets. Bhima was very fond of eating. So they made a plan. They would go on a picnic on the bank of Jamuna. And they would, uh, after the, and while they were having, going on a, when they were on a picnic, Durjodhan uh, allured Bhima away with his brothers. And said, Bhima, we got some delicious sweets for you. So Bhima was very happy. So he went, he used to love to eat. <laughs> like those who, are, those who have a healthy body, <laughs> they have. Uh, general uh, affinity for tasty food. So Bhima was uh, very fond of eating and he gave him those uh, <coughs> sweets. But those sweets were poisoned, mixed with poison, Kalkut, the poison of King Cobra. Uh, and Bhima so ate a lot and then the poison started work on him. He became unconscious. So when he became unconscious, they tied him up by hands and feet and threw him in the river. And it so happened that Bhima's body uh, fell, went to the Nagaloka. Huh? Underneath the planet, or uh, this planet is the Nagaloka, the region of the serpents. And Bhima fell on the uh, serpents. And the serpents, the snakes, underwater became very angry. So they started to bite him. Now he was poisoned with snake poison, uh, Kalkut. And now the snakes are biting him. You know what happens? What is the antidote for snake bite? poison of snake. So the snake bite made Bhima come back to life. He became conscious. And he didn't like it that the snakes were biting him. So with a snap he opened up his uh, 
the, the, the ropes that were tied him, tying him up, hands and feet, and he started to kill those snakes. Uh, so the news reached the king of snakes, Vasuki, that one human child is killing all the snakes. So Vasuki came out and he recognized Bhima. Uh, he had some, uh, he was a distant grandfather of Bhima. So he was very happy to see uh, that his grandson is there. So he very uh, affectionately took him uh, to the palace and made him drink uh, the nectar. They have also nectar. And Bhima drank seven pots of nectar. Uh, and he, after dr drinking that, he fell asleep. And when he woke up, they took him to uh, the surface of the water so that he could go back home. Now drinking this nectar, Bhima, as you acquired the strength of 10,000 elephants. That's how Bhima became so powerful. He was already powerful, the son of Pavandev, the most powerful demigod. And now he assumed the strength of 10,000 elephants. And in the meantime, everybody started to wonder what happened to Bhima. Initially, they thought, that probably Bhima went back home early. But when they reached home, Pandavas reached home, they found that Bhima didn't come back. So they went and started to look for Bhima in that spot. They couldn't find. And <clears throat> Kunti suspected that something must have happened because she could, she could see that Durjodhana was very vindictive, very uh, revengeful. So, she suspected, but at the same time, uh, she did not want to express that, that doubt. Then Bhima came, finally Bhima came back. Everyone was naturally very happy. So, this is another thing. Durjodhan wanted to kill him, but what happened? Bhima came back being more strong. Uh, so this is what happens. The de non-devotees, the, de the demoniac individuals try to harm the devotees, even go to the extent of trying to kill the devotees, but by the mercy of the Lord, they come back becoming much stronger. Uh, so this is how Bishan uh, Mother Kunti is saying that you have saved us from poison. Mm. Then Maha Agni, Maha Agni. Maha means great. Agni means fire. So mm. then uh, Durjadhan, uh, when the boys grew up now, they are growing up and Durjadhan became extremely envious when he saw that the Pandavas are becoming so popular. He had two, uh, two considerate, two concern. Actually, he was thinking that he would be the king. Dhritarashtra, although elder brother, he couldn't become the king because he was blind. Dhritarashtra had some hope that maybe his son will become king. But the news came that Kunti gave birth to a son before Gandhari could. Gandhari's pregnancy was going on for a long time. She was pregnant, uh, but she didn't give birth in time. The pregnancy was not coming out. Uh, and when the news came um, that Kunti gave birth and her Um is still, uh, the child is in the Um, Gandhari became so upset that she hit her abdomen. 
she hit her abdomen so hard that she had a miscarriage and what came out as a miscarriage uh, an iron ball uh, like a, a kind of you can say kind of uh, lump of flesh that was hard as iron and <clears throat> So everybody thought that it was a miscarriage. But at that time Vasudev came and he put this uh, that lump of flesh that was in 101 pots soaked in oil. And as a result of that in course of time 101 <coughs> children were born hundred sons and one daughter and and that is Duryodhan and his brothers and Dushala his sister so this is how uh, Dhritarashtra's plan uh, to be the king he couldn't become a king he was thinking that his son would become a king and even that plan, that desire was foiled. So that's why Dhritarashtra became so envious. Dhritarashtra, the name in the Vedic culture, the names are given according to astrological calculation. The astrologer uh, derives the character of that person accordingly, the name is given. Dhrita Rashtra. Rashtra means kingdom and Dhrita means holding on. So this character is trying to hold on to the kingdom uh, with all his might. He couldn't become a king. Now he wanted his son to become a king. His son also is not eligible to become a king because Dhrita, Yudhishthira Maharaj is the, is, is elder. In the Vedic culture, the eldest son inherits the father's or family dynasty. Uh, so Yudhishthira Maharaj is born before, so he is going to be the king. So Dhritarashtra along with Duryodhana is planning uh, how to kill Duryodhana, uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj and the Pandavas. And they made a plan. Uh, they created first they actually started to publicize that such and such Varanavat, there is a place called Varanavat, that Varanavat is such a beautiful place and so all the saintly people go there, all the saintly people live there and so Pandavas became curious about that place but what Durjadhan did he built a palace made of shellacks now shellac is inflammable. So beautiful palace was built, like you can see to it nowadays, uh, you get things made of fiberglass. Uh, so you can see it's not only a new culture. Uh, fiberglass uh, was present even in uh, those days 5000 years ago. Uh, what is fiberglass? Uh, Fiberglass is, uh, is uh, shellac. Uh, fiberglass is uh, raisin. Raisin is uh, the sap from uh, trees. But they are very, they are inflammable. So um, a fiberglass palace was built and a beautiful palace. Now when something is built of fiberglass, you can't really make out whether it's fiberglass or stone or uh, cement uh, plaster. The plan was to uh, burn them. Now they couldn't burn it as soon as they arrived. Uh, then people will suspect what went wrong. But when they were leaving for that place, Baranavat, Bidura uh, 
indicated to Yudhishthir Maharaj uh, that what was going to happen. Uh, in, it, it has been described in Mletcher language. That means in English. <laughs> he told him, uh, Yudhishthir, be careful, they are planning to burn you. Uh, but don't worry, I will send you the help for you to escape. So when he was leaving, those days only Vidura and Yudhishthir Maharaj knew English. <laughs> Others couldn't understand what they spoke. And then, <laughs> anyway, English means Bletcher language. English actually came much after. English is a combination of all different types of languages. Uh, the part of English is Saxon, then part of it is uh, Roman, uh, that is uh, Latin, part of it is German, which is stemming from Sanskrit. The origin of German language is actually, they recognize that the origin of German language is Sanskrit. Therefore, German root is called Indo-Garmanish. Vaisudas, Govinda. <laughs> so, Indo-Garmanish. Uh, Indian German root, meaning Sanskrit. So, anyway, so <clears throat> he spoke in Mletcher language, which was not known to others. And then he uh, this way he warned Yudhishthir Maharaj and then Yudhishthir Maharaj consulted with his brothers and told this is what is happening and in the meantime Vidura sent a, a tunnel digger <coughs> an expert who could dig tunnel under the ground so they dug a tunnel from the palace all the way to the forest. And when the tunnel was complete, they set fire in that house and escaped. And Purochan, the, the minister of Durjodhan, who was masterminding this plan, he got burnt with his whole family in that. And another uh, five uh, hunters and their children, uh, one woman uh, with her five children came to the feast that they organized. Before leaving, they had a big feast, Pandavas. And in that feast, this lady with her five sons ate so much that uh, she couldn't move. So they fell asleep right there. Pandavas didn't know that. Uh, they set fire and they left. In the morning when people came, they saw uh, the dead body, burnt body of a woman and five children. So they thought that the Pandavas along with Kunti are dead. So this is how uh, Krishna saved them from Mahagni, the great fire. Purushad Darshanad. From the cannibals, when they actually left the palace after lighting it, they came to the forest and they were through the tunnel <coughs> and they were sleeping, Bhima was guarding them. Then at that time there was a demoness called Hirimba. She used to reside in that forest with her brother Hirimba. Hirimba and Hirimba. Uh, so Hirimba uh, actually the Rakshasas are very fond of human flesh. Uh, so
So they got the smell. Huh? And that some human beings are there. So Hirimba told his sister, look, I get the smell of some human beings. Smelling like chili paneer. <laughs> So, you go and find out and bring them to me. So, Hirimba went and Hirimba saw this handsome, powerful young man. And just by seeing him, she fell in love with him. She approached him, proposing that he marries her. And he said, get lost, <laughs> you Rakshashi. <laughs> so seeing that she is taking so long to come back, Hirimba, Hirimba came there. And he found that his sister is having a romantic affair with this human being. So he became very upset and he attacked Bhima. And a terrible fight ensued. All the other Pandavas woke up and then they found eventually Bhima killed Hirimba, a terrible demon, Rakshasha. Then they were leaving, they were going away. Hirimba also started to walk behind them. So Mother Kunti saw that. Kunti asked, what happened? Why are you coming with us? Then she told, Look, I fell in love with your son. So Kunti said, Bhima, she wants to marry you. Marry her. Bhima said, With this one? <laughs> <laughs> the mother said, Okay. Huh? She, you see, uh, when she wants to marry you, uh, fulfill her desire. So, they were very obedient to their mother. So whatever the mother ordered, they accepted that. So, Bhima uh, went with Hirimba and <clears throat> they spent some time together and this way Hirimba became pregnant. And Hirimba gave birth to a son called Ghatotkach. Who was a very powerful warrior who fought valiantly during the battle of Kurukshetra. And there was a weapon that was saved for killing Arjun. But that weapon in total desperation, that weapon was used to kill Ghatotkach. So this was also Krishna's arrangement uh, that uh, Ghatotkach would be born to protect Arjun during the battle of Kurukshetra. So in this way, uh, and there another Rakshasha that was uh, a terrible Rakshasha that Bhima killed is called Baka. They, when they escaped from this Jatugriha, the house of Shelak, they started to hide their identity as wandering Brahmana mendicants. So they are just Brahmanas, they were wandering from one place to another, so that nobody could recognize them. Then they came to, eventually they came to a place called Ekachakra. And they became the guests of a Brahmana family. And the Brahmanas very cordially invited them and made arrangements for them to stay in their house. So one night they heard that they were uh, talking among themselves, the family, at the dead of the night. So when they uh, went there and start, they could hear that they are speaking about each other, speaking to each other. 
the father said okay i will go and the son is grown up now so he can take care of the family and then the mother said no no you see my life is useless i am getting old already the children have grown up so be- better let me go then the son said i am your son when i am alive how can i allow you to go so in this way they were talking and then they found out there was a demon rakshasa called baka and baka used to come and uh, eat up the people in the village in that place so that the village heads then made an arrangement with baka that once a month they would offer him a human being with whole lot of food for him to eat so he should not just come and indiscriminately kill people will there be there will be a system that uh, every month he'll have his his feed and this way different families used to have their turn to offer somebody from the family to buck so this is that now the ta- this turn is for the brahmana family to give the offering <coughs> so when kunti heard that heard them speaking like that she went and told them that look uh, my son will go and they said that you are our guest how can i offer allow our guest to become uh, a victim of this calamity then we will go to hell forever kunti said don't worry uh, my son can can kill that rakshas they said no 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 we can't let him go then finally kunti said look i am the mother do you think that any mother will let his son go to be killed like that i am completely confident that bhima will kill this baka and <clears throat> so finally they agreed <clears throat> then bhima went with all the uh, cart load of food went on top of the hill where baka is supposed to come so as i told you bhima was very fond of eating so he went on top of the hill and he started to eat that food so baka came and became furious to see that uh, this person is eating his share of food so he picked up a tree and started to hit bhim with uh, with that and bhima kept on eating and said scratch me a little more <laughs> <laughs> so baka became even more angry so he started to hit bhima with his bare hands at the back so then bhima turned around and encountered baka and he killed him he took the body of baka and took it to the uh, town entrance of the city or town whatever it is kept it there and <clears throat> in the morning when people came they were surprised to see that baka is dead so they knew that this was this brahmana family's turn to become the vic become the fi- feed for the baka rakshasa so they came and asked what happened and they told that yes we went but then one gandharva came and the gandharva fought with this baka and he killed him so the city people are very happy that at least they got rid of this terrible demon hmm? so this is how huh, the pandavas encountered the rakshasas like hirimba baka and <clears throat> now 
then Ashat Sabhaya Ashat Sabhaya from the vicious assembly from the vicious assembly was the assembly where they get it, they play the game of dice lot lot has happened in between the pandavas <coughs> were in exile in this way they were hiding themselves but then the time came the news came that Drupad's daughter Draupadi is going to get married in Swayambara Swayambara means a Kshatriya princess is allowed to choose her own husband so Draupadi was going to choose her husband the news came to them and Many people were just going to see, going to watch that, uh, that uh, occasion. So the Pandavas also went there. They also thought, let's also go and see. Now, Drupad actually wanted Arjun to marry Draupadi. But, and for that, Drupad made a condition that only Arjun could do that. Another person who could do was probably Karna. Uh, and the condition was high up, uh, fish was hanging. Mm. High up on, the, on a pole. And below the fish, there is a moving uh, wheel with one hole. Uh, the uh, the, the one uh, eccentric hole in a moving wheel and looking at the reflection on a pot of water one had to pierce the eye of that fish so what if uh, see the condition how difficult the condition must have been you are not looking up there you are looking at the reflection uh, and this wheel is moving with one hole. So you have to synchronize it in such a way that the arrow would go through the hole uh, and then pierce the eye. So one after another kings came, they all failed. Kings and princes failed. Then Karna came, Draupadi refused. He said, this person's identity is not known. I do not want to marry a person who doesn't have uh, his identity and coming from a lower class family because he was brought up by the Sutta. Uh, Sutas are the assistants to the Kshatriyas. They are not Kshatriyas, they are assistants like they are, you can say, a Sudra to the Kshatriyas, chariot drivers. So Draupadi refused to let Karna <clears throat> fulfill the condition. Then when all Kshatriyas failed, Drishtadumna, Draupadi's brother, announced that can any Brahmana now try to uh, fulfill this condition? So, uh, Arjun stood up and all the Brahmanas became very, some of the Brahmanas became very, very vocal. This guy must have gone mad <laughs> seeing this beautiful princess, his head has been <laughs> like, when all the Kshatriyas failed, this Brahmana dares to venture into that. Some other Brahmana says, why not? Brahmanas are superior to the Kshatriyas. <laughs> so you think what the Kshatriyas cannot do, the Brahmana, what a Kshatriya failed to do, the Brahmana will not be able to do it? Huh? Don't forget Parashuram, he is a Brahmana. Huh? Don't forget Dronacharya, he is a Brahmana. And this is how they started to glorify the Brahmanas. So then some other Brahmanas said, if he wants to try, so many people are trying, let him try, what's the harm? <clears throat> so Arjun went and he hit the target. Draupadi came 
and offered the garland to him, accepting him as her husband. And then all the Kshatriyas became so insulted uh, that they attacked uh, Arjun. So at that time Bhim picked up a tree, he didn't have any weapon, so he picked up a tree and just with one tree in his hand he fought in such a way that all the Kshatriyas were defeated. Uh, and then of course Drupad and actually they attacked, first they wanted to attack Drupad, all the Kshatriyas wanted to attack Drupad including Durjadhan and his party. But Bhim and Arjun came to their rescue. Then they went home, they were actually at that time Kunti, or rather Kunti with the Pandavas staying in the house of a, a clay pot maker. So <clears throat> they came to the house and said that mother, they used to go out begging during the day. So <clears throat> they went and announced, mother, we got some very special arm today by begging. So mother said, okay, all five of you share it. <laughs> so now mother said, all five of you share it. Uh, now mother's words must be honored so they five brothers decided to marry Draupadi a big controversy came out how can one woman be married to five men then Basdev came and told Drupad and Drishta Dumna uh, in the meantime what happened Drupad suspected that this must be Arjun because apart from Arjun, who can actually... Uh, he didn't believe that Arjun was dead. Pandavas were dead. So he to send Drishta Dumna. You go and find out who they are. So Drishta Dumna went and followed them and came to that house and he was eavesdropping. And he found uh, that these all five brothers, they're talking about weapons and armory. Uh, battle arrangements and all that. And he said, Brahmanas don't discuss about these things. <laughs> so he went and reported to his father and father, they are Pandavas, no doubt. <coughs> so in the morning, huh, the <coughs> emissaries were sent to bring them. And when they were brought, uh, then Drupad recognized that they are Pandavas. And they announced, he was very happy that finally Draupadi got married to Arjun as he desired and but then he got to know that by the mother's order now these five brothers are supposed to marry this one girl and <clears throat> so they were, there was a big controversy how can that be so at that time Basdev came and said, look, it is, it was to happen. It was to happen. Because in, his previ in her previous life, Draupadi, in order to get a suitable husband, worshipped Lord Shiva. And finally when Lord Shiva came and asked her, uh, then she started to tell, uh, give me a husband who is like this. Give me a husband who is like that. This way, five times she said, give me a husband. So Lord Shiva said, okay, fine, you'll have five husbands. <laughs> because five times you wanted. So, and then Vasudev also pointed out that these Pandavas are not ordinary mortals. They are born uh, as the children of demigods. So they are the offsprings of demigods. Uh, so, uh, so for her to marry these five demigods is not adharmic or against the religious principle. So when the Pandavas came back, okay, then another thing happened. <coughs> Bidura came and reported to Dhritarashtra that 
your family has been glorified. When Draupadi got married to the Pandavas, I mean, Pandavas won Draupadi, he said, uh, 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 your family has been glorified. But Dhritarashtra thought that Durjodhan won Draupadi. So he said, bring the, bring, bring the bride and the bridegroom immediately to the palace. <laughs> so then when he heard what actually happened, Dhritarashtra was quite heartbroken. But he didn't express it. He used to very carefully hide his emotions and feelings. So this is how the Pandavas were brought back. Then uh, Bhishma advised that give them their fair share. Actually, Yudhishthir owns the whole kingdom. But because you are so attached to the kingdom, at least give half the kingdom to them. Basdev also uh, advised him to do that. So then, uh, he gave, got the Pandavas a part of the kingdom which was barren land. Uh, barren land. There was no cultivation, nothing. And the Pandavas went and they uh, set up their kingdom over there. <laughs> they set up their kingdom. And this is a very wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful thing to note. The Pandavas got the barren piece of land, but when they started to rule over that place, uh, that place becomes, became so opulent and so prosperous that Durjodhan became extremely envious. And it, there is a very clear, distinct understanding about that. They are saying that the Pand when the Pandavas decided to move there, all the Brahmanas shifted there because they wanted to be with the Pandavas. Uh, then the business people uh, came there with a the hope to uh, make their business. So automatically uh, the, there was a uh, movement of um, prosperous and uh, qualified individuals. A whole lot of Brahmanas came, settled down and uh, Vaishyas came, settled down. And besides that Arjun actually had a condition a benediction from from Maya Dhanav. <coughs> you know that incident of Khandav forest burning uh, for Agni. Agni ate so much ghee in one fi on fire sacrifice that he started to suffer from indigestion. <laughs> and it was decided when he went to the the went to Dhanvantari, the demigod who is expert in Ayurveda, so he suggested, "Look, uh, you eat a forest. Then only you'll be able to be cured of your indigestion." So he the forest that was identified for him to burn or eat was Khandab forest. Now in Khanda forest lived Indra's friend Takshak. Uh, so each time Agni tried to burn the forest, Indra came with torrents of rain and extinguished the fire. So Agni couldn't eat it. So Agni actually approached Arjun and Krishna uh, with a plea that please help me uh, to burn this forest. So Krishna said, okay, uh, we'll do that. Uh, Arjun will fight and Arjun will prevent, protect Indra. But we need a chariot and we need proper bow and arrow, or proper weapons. And so Agni immediately arranged the chariot for them. And he is the one who gave Arjun the Gandiv bow and inexhaustible quiver 
two quivers that were inexhaustible called Akshaya Thun. So that he would use the arrows uh, to shoot and those arrows will not, the quiver will not become exhausted of arrows. So this is how uh, Arjun actually acquired the chariot uh, given by Agnidev and Gandiv bow and Akshatun. <coughs> and so when Indra came, Arjun actually prevented Indra. Indra could not shower the rain. With his arrows, Arjun was protecting the rains from falling on the ground. <laughs> so this is how expert those uh, warriors used to be during those days. Now in that forest, Maya was there. So Maya came and uh, offered himself begging uh, for his life. So Krishna and Arjun said, okay, you, you can go, you leave. And Maidana became grateful to Arjun and said, whenever you need me, please let me know. I'm, I'll be ready to do anything for you. So when they got their kingdom, they invited Mai to b bring the uh, city, bring the palace, actually bring the assembly hall. Assembly hall means a huge affair. And also, at that time, the city Vastu was done by Vasudev himself. So we can see that even those days, the Vastu uh, culture was, uh, actually the Vedic culture was, Vedic cities were all built on Vastu consideration. So this uh, Indraprastha, the name of the city was Indraprastha. So uh, this Indraprastha became so prosperous, although it was, uh, it was a barren piece of land offered to them. Durjodhan, when he came, became so envious seeing the opulence of the Pandavas that he decided to, and he was so humiliated actually. He was so humiliated that this palace or uh, this assembly hall, assembly area, that area had a mystic influence. For example, the, it was built in such a way that a dishonest person, an honest person will see the land as land and water as water. But a dishonest person would see the land as water and water as land. So Duryodhan came there uh, and he thought it was water, so he pulled up his dhoti to cross it and he, he tripped, thinking that it was water. Then when he came to the water, he just went straight into it. And at that time, uh, Draupadi and others started to laugh. And Yudhishthir Maharaj, of course, was very compassionate. He told Bhima, Bhima immediately get some dry clothes for Duryodhana. But Duryodhana was so badly insulted that he wanted to give up his body. But then his allies came and told him, don't do that, Duryodhana. Like, we will help you. And then they, then they schemed. Uh, that game of dice that uh, that Shakuni would play and in that game of dice they would take everything away from the Pandavas. Uh, so that is what has been discussed. The finally who the lost was Draupadi. The Yudhishthi Maharaj started to lose everything. Lost his kingdom, lost everything. Then he started to stake his brothers one after another, <coughs> lost all his brothers. Then Shakuni asked, now what's your next bait? He said, Draupadi. And then Draupadi was lost. So Dushashan was sent to bring Draupadi onto the assembly. 
And as you know, that on Durjadhan's order, Dushashan tried to strip Draupadi in that assembly. Uh, so that is the insult that they had to undergo in that assembly, publicly. But Krishna there also came to their rescue. As you know, uh, in one hand, Dushashan was pulling Draupadi's uh, sari, and on the other hand, Krishna just kept on supplying her unlimited amount of sari. So much so that the Dushrata Dushashan became completely exhausted <laughs> pulling the sari. <laughs> and uh, seeing that wonderful happening, they all became worried. Already they were worried uh, that this Pandavas now will become so revengeful that they are going to destroy the Kurus. But it didn't happen right away. They honored the code of conduct. They lost the battle and they lost the game of, in the game of dice. The final condition was <coughs> they would go to the forest for 12 years and remain incognito for one year. And during that one year of remaining incognito, if anybody could recognize them, if any one of them was recognized, then the condition would repeat. Another 12 years of forest and one year incognito. Anyway, in this way it has been pointed out that time and time again how Krishna saved them from various types of calamities. And finally it was during the battle of Kurukshetra that Krishna protected the Pandavas. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. So it's already five minutes to nine.